It's the top two teams in the Liberty A-League and a potentially season-defining clash. Western United, perfect through six, taking on Sydney FC. Their sternest test so far. City Vista on a warm afternoon, ready to stage this clash. And the Western Corps will be hoping that they can make it seven wins from seven for this expansion team that has had such a fantastic start to life in the Liberty A-League. So as the fans roll in to the ground in Melbourne's West, we take a look at how the teams will line up for this one. Weston having defeated Wellington 1-0, bring the goal scorer from that game, TJ Vlanich, into the starting 11, and they move Carly Johnson to the bench. Canadian-born attacker Danielle Steer could be in line to make her A-League women's debut. Francesca Iamano drops out of the matchday squad. Sydney FC are coming off a 4-2 win against the Newcastle Jets. And they make no change to the starting 11 shown here in numerical order. One change to the bench, though. The NPL New South Wales gold medalist of the 2022 season, Roller Butterweer, is into the matchday squad for Abby Lemon after Butterweer signed for the club midweek. And there is the woman of the moment, Princess Abini, becomes the youngest player to reach the 100-game milestone in the Liberty A-League. Just 22 years, 11 months and 11 days. Beating the mark set by Steph Catley, who was 23. No other player has been younger than 24 when reaching 100 games. A fantastic achievement for Abini. As Western United attack the left of your screens. And the match is underway at City Vista. It is the first of a Wednesday evening double header. Don't forget, coming up later tonight, also Adelaide against Melbourne City. And these matches, Grace, will shape the top four for now. Of course, it's a longer season. It's not win or go home just yet, but it really can set such a tone for the season ahead. Well, there's plenty of football to be played, but you're right. I think a, a win today, a result, would be a statement piece as much as anything else. Western United, the unbeaten side, and Sydney FC just filled with such quality. So... I'm sure both sides looking to come out and make a statement this afternoon. See, very heavily strapped right quad or hamstring for both Charlie's Rule and Charlotte McLean. So a couple of walking wounded in that Sydney defence, although McLean's been wearing that bandage all season and seemingly not too affected by it. But this is new for Charlie's Rule, which is probably not ideal. <laughs> And now Haley with an opportunity. Madison Haley sliding it to Mackenzie Hawksby, a clever run, and the shot is blocked by Alana Cern. But that's what Mackenzie Hawksby can do arriving in the penalty area. You can see Sydney FC, the way they're lining up here. Bill looking to go short, and it was Madison Haley who, right on the top of that 18 yard box, is just steering the direction of play here, making it really predictable for the rest of the Sky Blues to put pressure on all across the field. Rovers, Taranto touching it on for Keane. Steps out to the left. Has Vlanich. Vlanich first time ball. Onto the head of Della Harp. Was able to bisect two Western attackers and read the ball best in the air. Abini able to nudge it past Rovers, but there's a big 50 50 with Papadopoulos. It falls to Holman, who's caught in possession. Adriana Taranto. Likes a long shot, Taranto, it's been parried, and first to react is Rule. And a potentially costly giveaway there from Sydney FC. Weston have the ball back in attack. Rule holds up Vlanich. And Vlanich is able to fashion across, but too close to the keeper. Better though from Western United now, and Vlanich on that left foot. Connected well with Keane throughout that play. It was a good ball forward from Keane too, into space, and Western United just starting to feel their way a little bit more into this game. Taranto brings the ball to ground, nicked off the toes by Hawksby. Haley back to goal, Cummings right there with it. Abini, and not for the first time in the pass, with a bit too much juice on it to be run down. 50-50 exactly. Neither team really dictating the tempo of the game. Very much absorb and respond here. It has the caginess, grace of a, a high stakes game, to be honest. Neither team wants to make a mistake first before they go and try something creative themselves. Here's Cern coming across, getting rammed by Hawksby and 
Well, Mackenzie Hawksby will tell you she's never committed a foul in this league because every time the whistle goes, it is accompanied with a question to the referee as to why. But look, Alana Cern, she's been standout for me for Western United. Just a really solid performer. Solid defensively, makes good, strong tackles. Position, positioning has been sound. Papadopoulos. Shallow touch from Robers, but it still finds McDonald. Now Keane, linking up with McDonald again. Robers, engaged by the defender, but prods it on. McDonald, the cutback's on, parried into the path of Adriana Taranto, and Keane! Hannah Keane breaks the deadlock! And that goal takes Western United to the top of the league. They continue to show their legitimacy, and this time it's Keane. Well, Western United, they've got the edge there. It was a good build-up play, just getting a touch in, just making the passes. And again, we see Jess McDonald whip this one across the face of the goal. This is really patient play on that occasion by Adriana Taranto and Keane. Again, for Western United, stepping up all of her international experience on stage here. Della Harp ran into a one-on-two. The ball bobbles central. Western United had the numbers, but the pass is straight to a beanie. Flicked on by Haley, And again, you see how aggressively the ball bounces and spins on whenever it catches the wind. Yeah, we've also seen on a couple of occasions the switch out to Princess Abini. The wind has caught that one and ordinarily on a, a ball that would hold up and she'd run into space with, she's really struggled to reach. Well, it makes a back pass like that on target, particularly hair-raising from Sydney Cummings. But there's trust there between defender and goalkeeper. And again, if Sydney FC aren't going to come and chase the ball, Weston will take their time for the right pass. And they've overcooked it once again. Here's Hunter with a shot on sight. And the goalkeeper was in position. And that was a little tactical victory there for Sydney FC. It didn't take much to turn possession over. Yeah, and on that one, when Cummings had the ball in space in front of her, she's tried to force a pass down the middle of the field where Western United midfielders had really tight defence on them in sky blue shirts and not necessarily the best choice of pass in that situation. Here's another look. It was a, a hopeful ball. And then Mel Taranto not able to make ground. McDonald flicking the header on. And as it breaks in midfield, it's a bit of a kick and chase. And the first to get to the ball is McLean sweeping it away. But those are the moments that Western won't mind there, trying to use their pace, power, physicality to try and outrun Sydney FC. It's a very American NWSL style often. Kick it into space and may the best athlete win. Papadopoulos. Keane. Tobin against McDonald, and McDonald is able to outmuscle Tobin. Protects the ball well. Twisting and turning. Tobin doesn't want to be beaten. Papadopoulos with a 1-2. McDonald. Back to Robers. Swept into the box. It tumbles on and sits up for the shot. Prod it in. Keane with a double. And Western United. They pick their moments expertly. It's 2-0. And it's Hannah Keane with both of them. Will Hannah Keane take a bow? What a signing she has been for this Western United side. Mark Tocasso saw something in the player and her experience. And that's another really good team finish from Western United. We saw again Jess McDonald, the architect behind this, down his right-hand side. They're having a lot of joy down there. And Sydney FC are really struggling to clear defensively from the first time of asking. And Hannah Keane on the spot once more taps that home. Really well finished. One last hurrah before half-time, perhaps, for Sydney FC. It'll change the tone in the rooms for both teams. So would a third Western goal, as Toronto comes through and wins the ball, and then can't hit either of the American attackers that were breaking. Well, that was a golden opportunity for Western. Now there are gaps open. Princess of Beanie in game 100, driving forward, finds Sarah Hunter in space to finish the first half of the bang. Here's Courtney Vine, back to Hunter, and Beal holds on to the shot. Well, they did create one last chance. And as the halftime whistle goes, 
Western United are trying to make it a magnificent seven. And the three points, while they're not in the bank, they have quite the advantage. Thanks to that woman, Hannah Keane, her double means that the halftime score at City Vista in this top of the league clash is Western United 2, Sydney FC 0. Sydney FC, they want to change the equation here. Madison Haley kicks off the second half and Sydney FC go chasing a 2-0 deficit as Amy Medwin breaks through and goes on a run to start the second half here. A third for Weston and maybe sky's the limit as we have late contact and a foul and a card immediately out of the pocket for Sarah Hunter. So that is a suboptimal start to the second 45 for Sydney FC. Well, quick to pull out the yellow card on that one. No questions for Kate Jakowicz, and it's a, a fiery start from Sydney FC trying to turn this one around, but a heavy contact, heavy challenge to begin. Adriana Taranto back on her feet. And of course the Taranto twins there, both over the ball. Here's another look at the late contact, which was enough to draw the referee's attention. So Hunter joins Madison Haley in the book. So, what do the Taranto Twins have in store? Mel is the number 16. Adriana Taranto is going to leave it for Mel. And out to the left it goes. TJ Vlanich in space, crossing it in. Keane leaning into the header. And Nat Tobin has avoided a clash of heads. It looks like it's only going to be a goal kick. Nat Tobin's all right. Quick word from the referee. Sydney FC are able to defend at the set-piece situation. Ibini from deep, wants a runner, but that's going to be intercepted by CERN. King, the double goal scorer so far. Can't quite hit McDonald, and even though McDonald digs deep and finds the pace to get out to the line, not before the ball had already run long. And we are going to see the first sub, 10 minutes into the second half. And Sydney FC are going to play one of their aces. It's an A-League women's debut for Rola Baduia, the reigning champion player of NPL New South Wales with Sydney University. Went to California Baptist University in the United States. And how about this, Grace? She's coming on for Courtney Vine. So the Matilda makes way and Rolla Butterweir, who netted 13 times in NPL New South Wales in a stellar season over winter. The American gets her shot in the A-League women's. Well, what a great opportunity for Rolla Butterweir. And congratulations to Rolla on her A-League women's debut. And Imagine that, coming on for a Matilda in the likes of Courtney Vine. By her standards, Vine had a relatively quiet game and, and struggled much to Medwin's good form and good close contact. Straight away, Butterweir attacking through the left side. Trying to use that element of surprise for any Western players that might not be familiar with it. And there's a foul. So straight away an impact. And as Courtney Vine walks her way around the outer side of the ground to the sidelines, I think that's going to be a talking point on Dove Zone this Saturday at 2.45, Grace. The form of some of our Matildas in the Liberty A-League always captures our attention. And Vine, you just wonder if she's 100% because she wasn't at her best today. Anyway, that is for later. This is the free kick for now. Mackenzie Hawksby stands over the dead ball. Is this Sydney FC's moment to get back into the contest? Lots of shouting going on as Hawksby glides it through the six-yard box. Lots of flyers, and the foul is paid for contact on Hillary Beale, and Charlie's rule might have been the offender. That was a good ball whipped in there from Hawksby. Right kind of height, right kind of trajectory behind that one. This is the impact we see early, but we are making just a little nip of the heels from Robers onto Sarah Hunter. So will there be a different energy to Sydney FC's attack? Because there's been a few positional reshuffles here. It looks as though Princess Avini is going to stay on the left flank after all. Madison Haley perhaps on the right. Maybe Butterweir in the middle. Haley Knocks the ball back. McLean. Tobin. 
Again, difficult pass to control. The awkward bounces, the looping balls, and the giveaways. Keane re-engaging with the game. Scored both the goals in the first half. It's been a bit more subdued in the second, but still doing a lot of running. Papadopoulos, case in point. Keane made ground, got fouled. Heavy contact there on Keane. Just as she was lunging for that one from Tobin, but... 20 minutes to go. We heard the referee. There's going to be a drinks break. Hannah Keane is going to walk off that knock to the ankle. And so, Grace, with 20 minutes to go, it's Western United in the box seat as things stand. Stats in the second half. Sydney FC, two shots, neither on target. Western United, the same. And possession, Western United, 51%. Sydney FC, 49 Drops it at the penalty spot. The initial header from Rule, Beanie, waits for the ball to bounce and then just nods it on. Sydney Cummings anticipated the drop of the ball. And the centre back staying forward as the ball is turned behind by Holman. That first touch from Sydney Cummings just to create a bit of space for herself was really nice Not to turn the play back around. And Sydney FC uh, has got some defending to do here. Wainich, we saw her first corner of the game was an in-swing into the near post. Can we expect something similar here? There's no short option. Everyone's really crowding the six-yard box. You can see Keane, arms up, trying to distract the goalkeeper. In comes the corner, bending right to the line! And McDonald did it cross. No, it stays out. Rover's shot, blocked away. How did that not go in? It looked like it was on the line. And now the follow-up ball is held on to... And Sydney FC survive somehow. Well, what a ball once more from Vlainich. Her delivery from these corners has been sublime. And I don't know how that one didn't find its way into the back of the net. It looked, it looked for a moment as though it had gone over the line. Papadopoulos dragging Abini all the way down into defence. But it's going to be Sydney FC's ball. Well, Tobin's the captain. She doesn't want to go down here. That's a look at the Sydney FC bench. Anna Green's wearing the vest, but still standing over away from the fourth official. And now we've got a Western United player down. Taranto fouled by Hawksby. Just a touch late on that one, Hawksby. It's Adriana Taranto. Mel Taranto, of course, is the sister that has suffered a torn ACL. So, a free kick, mid-range, and they've got tall targets to aim for. Keane may be off, but Cummings and McDonald remain on. And Danielle Steer, not exactly diminutive either. So, a few players that could get up for a header. As Taranto floats the ball in, no one's able to make a play at it, and it goes out for a goal kick. Look, that's a top ball in from Taranto. Western United just need a runner coming through. McLean. Stanish Flutty. Fresh off the bench. Looking to launch it long. Ebini. Low. Under hit pass. And cleared away by Cummings. Great to hear the Western Corps. They're still chanting. They're still making noise. Baruia. Lifts across, not quite able to steer it back towards the teammate. It lands on the roof of the net. And I know I mentioned it earlier on in the half, Grace, but again, Western's such a young club, such a new club. Their women's team is a draw card for fans. I mean, I think so many people look at the prism of uh, A-League women's as, you know, the league started after the A-League men's by a few years. So these are the, uh, you know, additions to the men's team. Uh -uh, they're equals. And I think this Western United women's team is as much of a draw card as the current A-League men's champions to get along and watch a game. If not more, Teo, they're a real joy to watch at the moment. Western United, sometimes not the tidiest football, but nonetheless, Mark Tocasso is figuring out ways to get results out of this Western United side. And look, it's been really enjoyable watching some of these players come up through Calder United and abouts. That's the thing. They have the homegrown connection to the local area as well, which is such a bonus. Building that link within the community as we see a foul here. And of course, they've uh, just dusted the icing with a couple of shrewd imports. I mean, 
Say, four players from North America. Grace, none of them have made a single appearance in the NWSL. Sydney Cummings, Guyanese international, dual citizen of America. Hannah Keane, journeyman striker who never got a shot at the NWSL. Sydney Cummings here on the books of an NWSL team but yet to make an appearance. And that's the same story for Hilary Beale. And then, of course, they've got Jess McDonald as the, uh, the guest marquee coming over the top. I was going to say, when you do bring in that quality of McDonald, it just raises out of everyone around her. And that's the thing. Other teams can uh, still activate a guest marquee if they've got a target in mind, if they've got the big, a big enough name in mind, I suppose. Awkward little pass out here from Offa. Oh, nearly blocked down by Sinclair. Weston perhaps looking to ice the cake here. The shot from Taranto! And it's saved away by Offa. Well, we're into the last minute of regulation and that would have been everyone going home happy from the home team. And the travelling Sydney FC fans, we saw a pocket of them earlier. Well, they'll be applauding Katie Offa for that, for keeping the score at 2-0. Natasha Dakic is going to come on the centre back for the last few seconds of this one. And Adriana Taranto will take her leave after another busy day. Here's how it broke down for the Sydney FC defence. Well, good pressure from Western United. Picked up in the middle of the park. And look, I really like this shot from Taranto. Well done, Katie Offa, to steer that one outside the frame of the goal. But what a con contribution this afternoon that, this afternoon rather, that Adriana Taranto has made. I'll ask regardless. I'm intrigued as to who your player of the match is in such an even contest. As we see a fumble here, and Madison Haley or puts it into the side netting. That could have been the big finish for Sydney FC. And their best chance of the second half ends with Madison Haley frustrated. It's only going to be a corner. That's been a tale of Haley's performance this afternoon. Just unable to steer that one into the back of the net. A great opportunity. Abini driving in on her right, preferred right side, and just that little slip as she looked to get that one away. I mean, I guess the bobble can be the enemy and the bobble can be your friend. It's not the greatest pitch, and on that occasion, it nearly undid Hilary Beale. Barouir blocked by Alana Cern, who is, of course, the holder of the Aliga Femini belt. No one's taking it off her at the moment, not until Western United lose a game. She's had another clean sheet to, to back up today. She's had a great performance this afternoon, Alana Cern. Really solid for Western. And stoppage time is up. Western United about to bank win number seven, about to send yet another message to the rest of the competition. They will have defeated both of last year's grand finalists. Jess McDonald, instrumental. Western United smiling again. Another clean sheet. And another win, seven in a row. Who is going to stop them? The Premier's plate winners from last season couldn't. And so Western United prevail again. Hilary Beale, a hard fought. Clean sheet for her as it finishes Western United 2, Sydney FC 0.